I wish to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to this meeting and giving me an opportunity to review this important area of experimental and clinical medicine. And after having given you my disclosures, I just want to call your attention on, uh, on the concept that the approval of uh, AAB-based gene therapies over the last years has been associated with a huge amount of publications. And we have defined two major directions pursued in, uh, in, uh, in those publications. First of all, uh, the, the relevance of uh, directions pursued in translational research to uh, make possible these approvals. And here you see uh, uh, the directions pursued, which involve a series of public and private involvements in the area. Secondly, and more recently, another uh, direction uh, has been followed, which is mostly rela related to uh, the best ways to advance the use of AAV-based gene therapies. And we have tried to analyze this more uh, modern issue because this may be very important for AAV-based gene therapies uh, in, uh, in clinical medicine and in hematology, as well as to uh, provide new ideas for the development of gene therapy in general. And let me start just by taking into account uh, the, uh, the advancing the use of AA, the, the, the improved cassette engineering to advance the use of AAV-based gene therapy. A couple of years ago, a systemic review uh, of clinical trials in AAV-based gene therapies has been published that covers uh, over uh, 149 unique clinical trials <coughs> involving more than 3,000 patients over 20 years. And the general concept emerging from these studies is that AAV-based gene therapy is well-tolerated, successful, and safe treatment modality. Low-grade adverse events uh, being reported in 20% uh, of, uh, of these trials, usually uh, during the first month following AAV uh, administration, uh, and one third of them were uh, attributed to vector components. Transaminitis was the first, the first of such low-grade adverse events. It was determined in a hemophilia in several hemophilia patients undergoing gene therapy, and uh, it was very important to know that uh, it, it, that this um, this adverse event. Uh, has a very good response to corticosteroids um, being uh, mostly related to vector and transgene specific T cell responses to uh, AAV transduced cells. Also, uh, major uh, adverse events have been reported and, and they are summarized in this slide. In three cases, thrombotic microangiopathy uh, was defined, uh, which is a complement related issue. <clears throat> In four cases, uh, liver problems, in, in two cases being fatal, have been reported. Uh, and in reality, it is important to uh, emphasize uh, that in myotubular myopathy, uh, there is a, a, an, an inherent um, liver, uh, liver disorder, which has not been evaluated so far in detail. <clears throat> And that for central nervous system, three cases have been reported, uh, two related to uh, peripheral nervous system toxicity and one related to central nervous system toxicity. Concerning the central nervous system of uh, almost one year in health uh, after intracerebral injection, participants uh, experienced uh, T2 abnormalities consistent with localized inflammation and edema at the site of vector injection. And then they were attributed to vector or transgene specific immune toxicity. In contrast, in uh, uh, peripheral nervous system toxicity, severe neurological loss in the absence of inflammation or uh, uh, signs of uh, toxicity have been defined, have been identified uh, at pathological examination. 
Two major conclusions of the systemic review are reported in this slide. First of all, in spite of its ability to increase average AAV doses to be used in clinical practice, in reality, <coughs> sorry, second generation vectors still may cause toxicity to the liver and elsewhere. The better cassette engineering is indeed needed to decrease the viral load needed to achieve therapeutic effects, which means to uh, allow GT to avoid uh, in the liver and escape the uh, immune control and to make transgenes functional in a, a very narrow setting uh, of cells. The second conclusion is related to the observation by the authors of the, uh, of the review of the uncertain durability of the GT response. And in this, uh, in this sense, the, the, in, in this direction, they uh, argue for uh, long-term, potentially lifelong follow-up data in settings without rapid transgene decline uh, and in, uh, in conditions where steroid, uh, steroids uh, are used for in, in some cases, of course, just to have differences and to uh, define, to single out the role of steroids under those conditions. <clears throat> Concerning the uh, the low numbers, uh, the, lo the low number of cases of neurotoxicity, the data uh, have been further analyzed with emphasis on the preclinical animal uh, preclinical studies, especially animal models in non-human primates, and two major uh, uh, the data emerge in this respect. First of all, that AAV-associated AAV neurotoxicity occurs in general in animals treated intracerebrally, which means locally. And this is uh, true in general. However, it is also true that when you increase uh, sufficiently the, the amount of AAV doses to be administered systemically, say intravenously, you can achieve the same response. And secondly, that the amount of, uh, of genes, uh, um, uh, of transgenes or whatever you use are dramatically higher than the ones you use in uh, uh, AAV-based gene therapy in hemophilia. In both cases, impurities uh, are only defined as contributing factors. Uh, this is uh, uh, the reason why the authors claim for GP, uh, GMP grade vectors to be used in preclinical studies in order to allow mm, preclinical data to be useful in humans. Concerning the mechanism uh, of neurotoxicity, um, data are accumulating to show that non-human primates receiving steroids or immune suppressive therapy still display neurotoxicity despite the ability uh, of uh, uh, these drugs to blunt vector and transgene specific immune responses. And this calls for two major directions to be followed to understand um, the observation, the clinical uh, and the experimental observations obtained. First of all, unmethylated CPG motifs uh, may trigger per se uh, an immune response through, uh, through via the toll-like receptor 9 mediated recognition. And it is also true <clears throat> that the lower uh, uh, the GPC uh, motifs within the vector structure, the lower the risk of uh, uh, innate immune sensing and of specific T cell responses. And this, uh, this has been also documented in humans. The second direction to be pursued is related to the fact that in generally neuron degeneration and neuro neuronal uh, toxicity occurs preferentially in cells with the highest transgene expression. This calls for uh, um, for uh, uh, protein response, uh, for uh, stress-induced apoptosis following the unfolded protein response pathway, which is a major mechanism for the control of the uh, 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 protein function and protein structural integrity.
Now, presently, we have no information whatsoever uh, whether high levels of transgene messenger RNA or the protein itself is involved in, uh, in, this, in, in these events. However, it is very clear that this direction appears to be very important, appears to be very important also in, uh, in uh, evaluating mechanisms involved in liver toxicity uh, in AAV-based gene therapy in hemophilia. The second direction that has been uh, uh, that is uh, pursued is relative to the extensive requirements for the pharmaceutical industry. In uh, regular drug treatments, uh, we are uh, we are used to to think about uh, manufacturing costs, quality controls, removing uh, impurities, uh, and so on, as key challenges and major determinants of product costs. In reality. In AAV-based gene therapies, other, direction, other additional directions to, uh, should be explored. First of all, the need of ad, ad hoc clinical endpoints to be, de to be designed, tested, and validated in clinical conditions where there is no previous treatment available and where you need to have some very clear endpoints to evaluate the efficacy of a treatment. Secondly, you need to have trained treaters uh, for uh, um, AAV vector genome uh, administration, uh, for instance, subretinally uh, or intracerebrally. Uh, the long term, the five year experience with Luxterna was very important for defining additional uh, requests for uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies as far as the post-marketing uh, uh, requirements are concerned. First of all, you have to have a huge amount of centers of excellence to, uh, to treat patients, which means uh, you need standard, the very, very careful and detailed standard operating procedures, a very uh, well, uh, very well organized training programs for treaters, and you have to board, to board certificates, qualified operators. In addition, you uh, drug companies are also uh, requested to share both positive and negative data and provide original results in order to maximize safety and potential benefits of GT from one side and to uh, uh, avoid to repeat harmful or unsuccessful studies. Long-term analysis of the ex vivo treatment of adenosine the amin the aminase deficiency causing severe combined immune deficiency uh, um, extends to ex vivo gene therapies, the relevance of these concepts, and also adds additional uh, requests and additional uh, challenges for the pharmaceutical industry in order to make this strategy uh, the strategy is accessible to patients worldwide. It means in reality to set up adequate manufacturing capacities for the, uh, the needs of the expanded market, to guarantee long-term monitoring and vigilance, uh, to maintain cost-effectiveness of personalized treatments. The, the third direction that has been uh, pursued is related to patient selection and clinical improvement endpoints as, as critical variables for uh, clinical product development. This is a very important issue in view of the fact that, for instance, in hemophilia now, we are, we are discussing a lot about the relevance of, the, of this issue. In situations such as hemophilia, uh, where the number of patients is rather limited, you cannot have case control studies to evaluate the efficacy uh, and the safety of, drug, uh, of, of a treatment. What we do uh, in, in general is to know very well the nature of history of, uh, of a disease and to define based on it very specific endpoints to be analyzed in order to evaluate efficacy. Uh, 
Information from uh, uh, another very important uh, clinical, uh, hematological clinical condition, I refer to transfusion dependent thalassemia, provide very important information concerning the, 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 the question of the natural history and, uh, and, and, and patient selection. And I will discuss with you two issues specifically uh, emerging from, uh, from long-term studies in this area, which may be very useful for uh, um, hemophilia gene therapy. First of all, patient selection. In transfusion-dependent thalassemia, uh, transfusion support starts when kids are almost six, six months old. In reality, <clears throat> the earliest enrollment age is three years, which means that for two years and something, um, these kids are exposed to iron overload. Their liver are exposed to iron overload. The upper age limit for uh, uh, gene therapy in this setting is 35 to 50 years, uh, which means that for say 35 to 50 years, not only the liver, but also lungs and also, uh, and also the heart are exposed to iron overload and fibrosis. That's the reason why the, the, the authors in the era insist on the need to use age plus full organ assessment to define, to define, to identify the optimal patients to be treated with gene therapy. Secondly, uh, in, uh, uh, in hemophilia, we discuss a lot about uh, whether to strive for normal rather than therapeutic levels of factor eight, factor nine. Now, in, uh, in, in uh, transfusion-dependent thalassemia, an important from transfusion-dependent thalassemia, an important inf information is provided in this respect. Indeed. Uh, the authors there insist on the need to maintain uh, hemoglobin levels uh, persistently uh, above 10 uh, grams per deciliter. Otherwise, <clears throat> you just transform a, a, a hemophilia, sorry, a transfusion dependent hemophiliac into a, a um, you convert in reality, a, convert a transfusion dependent thalassemic into uh, a transfusion independent thalassemic, a condition in which in reality you have iron overload um, due, due to increased uh, intestinal absorption, which means that in reality you are unable to avoid under those conditions hypercoagulability, um, risk of strokes and so on. And this may be very important for uh, discussion that we are uh, doing in uh, hemophilia. Uh, there is an additional issue that emerged from this study. So, as I told you, <clears throat> this is an ex vivo gene therapy in which lentiviral vectors are employed. Now, the authors <clears throat> strongly emphasize that none of the patients treated with new lentiviral vectors have developed any leukemia or myelodysplastic syndrome, which is very important for the sake of the argument and for the future of gene therapy in hemophilia. And we will come back uh, on uh, this issue uh, in a uh, few slides. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, in spite of the idea that gene therapies can diverge on design and endpoints, and that based on, uh, on the mechanisms, informative outcomes may also differ, which is a, a, a common tenet now in uh, gene therapy. Some broad, sorry, some broad conclusions are supposed, supported by the majority of the studies, and we have, uh, uh, anal, and we have uh, uh, summarized this data in the, the following three slides. First of all, the need of an improved cassette engin engineering AAV uh, capsid variants with improved tropes for the target tissue should be defined to lower doses and to lower treatment associated toxicity. This is also important to reduce uh, GPC motifs uh, within the vector and the ITR and uh, limit immune recognition. 
this is a, a direction that requires a very good capsid libraries to be employed. The second uh, issue emerging from this improved cassette engineering story is that presently um, antisense and gene editing strategies are expected to complement uh, to complement gene augmentation uh, to provide permanent solutions in conditions where AAV-based gene therapy uh, does not suffice per se to resolve uh, some issues. In, in, in view of this and in respect of this issue, we need to know which is the optimal result, the maximum result that we can get just by using the AAV-based vectors in order to know when uh, and uh, to start and in what conditions to start um, this type of complementation. The, um, the issue concerning the requirements for the pharmaceutical industry in reality requires to align the interest of uh, drug companies of the pharmaceutical industry with the interests uh, of the uh, of the uh, of, the, of the, the, the the health system. Health system in this respect uh, requires pharmacovigilance and long-term follow-ups and to maintain cost-effectiveness of personalized therapies. There is an additional issue that should be taken into account in general, which is related to the emerging issue, to the very important emerging issue of gene therapy treatments for all. Now, from this point of view, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, sorry, very important to think about developing countries as a, directions to be, a direction to be pursued. In uh, respect to this, tailored approaches to costs and payment systems are required in order to make this GT treatment for all accessible. Um, and the, 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 the other issue to consider is related to, uh, to the patient selection issue, which means to the nature of history. In reality, we believe that these days, just to uh, pursue the specific issue, we should consider uh, that um, a, an appropriate selection requires analysis at the molecular and cellular levels. This is the, the level. This is the only direction that we believe should, can be pursued to define the role of manufacturing, treatment, and patients-related parameters as to outcome, safety, and durability of gene therapy. The second issue that is uh, emerging uh, among long-term goals that are summarized in this part of the world is related to the, uh, to the complementing issue and to, the com to, to decide to uh, introduce uh, um, new new complementing uh, issues to solve, to, to new complementing strategies to solve unsolved issues. And this is going to raise additional problems to be, um, to be solved. In reality, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, what is clear at this stage of the game is that we can start thinking seriously about the possibility of improving or further improving AAV-based gene therapy to improve, in general, gene therapy and the impact of gene therapy on the future of medical practice. Thank you for your attention.